Hey YouTube, I'm back, and for once I'm uploading something in a timely manner. Last week I did a little show and tell about the assembly of the Shapeoko 2 CNC kit from Inventables. This week I'm wiring up the electronics and running the Shapeoko 2's included test program, HelloWorld2.nc. We begin with a nearly completed CNC from last week. All of the structural members are installed, as well as the stepper motors. The first step is to wire up the motors to the Arduino and the G-Shield. There are a number of ways to do this, and most of them look cleaner than what I did, but let me explain my thought process and you can chime in in the comments below. I wanted to maximize the longevity of the relatively fragile stepper motor leads, so I placed the terminal blocks as close to each motor as possible. This way, the wires would experience the least amount of motion. The X and Z axis stepper motor wires will almost never move in this configuration. The one motor I couldn't do this for was the left Y axis stepper motor. I wrapped those wires with expandable sleeving to make the overall bundle a tiny bit stiffer and to eliminate any abrasion on the gantry. I routed the four conductor wires from the CNC to the Arduino in a single bundle which I kept isolated from the machine. The Arduino could have been mounted on board, but my thinking was that if I ever upgraded the CNC to have a larger build area, I'd rather just buy longer, cheaper 4-conductor wires than the longer USB cables. It should be noted that to change the direction of rotation of a stepper motor, one pair of wires should be reversed. This needs to be done for the Y-axis stepper motors since they're installed in opposite orientations but need to move in the same direction. With everything wired up, it was time to test the system. I opened up UGS and poked around with the jog function to see how the shape Oko responded. I ended up reversing some of the stepper motors in order to have a friendlier coordinate system when looking at the machine from the spindle side. At this point, I looked in the Shapeoko's instructions and found out I needed to input some machine-specific constants into gerbil running on the Arduino. These numbers dictate things like how fast the CNC should move and how many steps it takes to move one millimeter. If you have custom motors or gearing, there's a calculator online you can use to figure out what these settings should be for your machine. Once I finished that, I decided it was time to run Hello World. And that's where things started to go wrong. Mistake number one, forgetting to zero the machine. HelloWorld2.nc is a simple program that writes Shapeoko2 in the work area. The file basically instructs the Arduino to play connect the dots, lifting and lowering the Z carriage at specific intervals to draw letters. After positioning the Sharpie where I wanted to start, I selected the Hello World file on my computer and hit send. But because I hadn't designated my current starting position as the new machine zero, the CNC immediately went back to the position it had been in when I turned it on. From there, it started writing out Shapeoko2 in the air. This is actually a legitimate way to test a CNC program without risking damage to end mill bits or sharpies, but since I was feeling impatient, I cancelled the program. Mistake number two, cancelling the program. Let's get a little more technical about G-code. When you instruct a machine to go to coordinates x1, y1, there are always units associated with that coordinate. Moving one millimeter is very different from moving one inch. The shape focus starts off in millimeters by default. The coordinates of Hello World are in inches. At the beginning of Hello World, a line of code, G20, is processed, which puts the machine in imperial units. At the end of the program, the CNC is returned to work in metric units. When I cancelled Hello World the first time, this didn't happen. When I later went to lower the tip of the Sharpie to the surface of the work area, instead of dropping the marker 1mm, the CNC ended up trying to mash the Sharpie through the table. To correct this, you can either run Hello World to completion, it takes about 150 seconds, or manually type G21 in the command tab of UGS. Mistake number three, failing to level the build platform. When I did finally manage to run Hello World, I noticed my marker wasn't always marking the paper. In some areas, the unevenness of the paper allowed the Sharpie to still make contact, but it was clear that the tip of the marker was drifting away from the work surface. I realized I hadn't adjusted the rails of my CNC to be level. From one corner to the other, the gantry would gradually lift away from the work area. This was actually good in my case, because if the unevenness had been reversed, my sharpie would have gotten progressively blunter as I wrote out a message. I used a wooden block to gauge the offset of the sub-gantry from the work area, and tweaked the attachment of the maker slide to the end plates until everything was leveled. The next morning, I ran Hello World again, and everything looked much better. The lettering came out clean, and the program finished uneventfully.
and with this milestone achieved, I declared my ShapeOco 2 fully operational and ready for its first project. Next weekend, I'll install the spindle, or maybe even a real Dremel, and run a simple program sketched out in MakerCam, a browser-based G-code generator that lets you start from drawn shapes or uploaded vector image files. If that works, I'll try generating a toolpath from an SVG file, and eventually I'll try using a program like Freemill to generate G-code from an STL file. Projects lined up include Arc Reactor 2.0, a P25 slingshot pistol, and some engraving work for my friend's DIY wooden HTPC enclosure. I'll share all of it as I go along, so subscribe for more engineering pornography and other nerdy brain fluff. Until then, thanks for watching YouTube, and I'll see you in a week or two.